What is up guys, Randomonium here, and today we're going to be analyzing the age-old question, does surrendering in ranked actually save you time? Nearly every time I see someone vote yes for a surrender in a ranked game, their explanation for their vote is, I don't want to waste my time. But they never bother to analyze whether surrendering actually saves them time in the long term from an LP gain perspective. Now at this point, some of you are probably saying, of course it saves me time because it ends the game sooner and it lets me move on to my next game. But does it really? Out of all of those games that you surrender in, are all of them absolutely hopeless? Are you 100% guaranteed to lose in each and every one? Are you honestly saying that there is a 0% chance that the enemy team will throw? Obviously not. Throws happen all the time, especially in low elo where most players reside. So the question we have to ask ourselves is how often do throws need to occur for it to actually be worth our time not to surrender? For the sake of not boring most of you to death, I'm going to gloss over a lot of the math and I'm just going to explain my thought process and the results I found. If you're interested in the math, I've put a link to a Google Sheet in the video description below that you can check out. So we all know that there are two ways that the team can win the game, destroying the Nexus or having the enemy team surrender. For the sake of simplicity, we'll assume that half of all games end with one team destroying the Nexus and half of all games end by surrender. You can honestly adjust the percentages however you like and it really doesn't affect your results too much. Furthermore. We're going to be using large sample sizes, so we'll assume that half of our wins come from destroying the Nexus, half of our wins come from the enemy team surrendering, half of our losses come from the enemy team destroying our Nexus, and half of our losses coming from our team surrendering. For example, if we're lucky enough to have a 60% win rate, this means that 30% of the games we win by destroying the Nexus, 30% of the games we win by the enemy team surrendering, 20% of the games we lose by the enemy team destroying our nexus, and 20% of games we lose because our team surrenders. It's important to separate wins and losses into these groups because game where one team destroys the nexus typically lasts longer than games where one team surrenders. What we're especially interested in is that last group of games, the games where we lose because our team surrenders. These are the games that we want to try and win a small percentage of. So how do we win a game where we're at such a disadvantage that we're considering surrendering? The easiest way to have a chance to win those games is you need to stall out the game until the late game. In the late game, gold advantages mean much less because both teams are at full build or near full build. And because death timers are so long, this turns games effectively into coin tosses where whoever wins a team fight is much more likely to win the game regardless of gold disparity. We're going to assume that dragging out the game doubles the average surrender game length to 50 minutes. This of course raises our average game time and makes it so that the player winds up playing less games per unit time. However, because we're winning a small percentage of those games that we would normally would surrender in, we will have a slightly higher win rate. Effectively, we're trading faster games for a better win rate. However, in order to figure out whether or not we're actually wasting our time, we need to calculate what percentage of those quote-unquote hopeless games we would need to win in order to cancel out not being able to play as many games per unit time. When you crunch the numbers, the results are actually very surprising. First off, if you have a win percentage less than 50%, it's pretty much always advantageous to not surrender because getting your win rate closer to 50% is far better than just playing more games at a lower win rate. Likewise, if you get less LP for a win than for a loss, it's also pretty much always advantageous to not surrender because it's far better to minimize your loss rate than just play more games. Once you look at win rates greater than 50% and cases where you get more LP for wins than losses, things get much more complex though. The general rule is that the closer you are to a 50% win ratio and the closer your win LP is to your loss LP, the more advantageous it is for you to not surrender. For an average player with a 50% win rate who gains two more LP for a win than for a loss, 
he only needs to win 2% of games where his team wants to surrender in order to actually save time in the long run by not surrendering. If we increase the player's win rate to 52%, but we keep his LP gain constant, this raises the number of games he needs to win to only 3.5%. Even at a 55% win rate and gaining 5 more LP for a win than for a loss, a player only needs to win 9% of games where his team wants to surrender in order to break even. It's only when we get to high win rates and or high net LP gains that surrendering seems like the better alternative. However, if you're able to get such a high win rate or your MMR is so high that you have very good LP gains, then chances are that you can hard carry and win significantly more games where your team wants to surrender. Ultimately though, it's your decision. The purpose of this video is not to tell you that you're wrong if you want to surrender. It's to give you all of the facts about surrendering so that you can make the most informed decision possible. If you honestly feel like there's a 0% chance for you to win the game, then maybe surrendering is the better choice. If you're extremely tilted and you're worried that you might carry that tilt into future games if you don't surrender, then surrendering might be the better choice. However, if your sole goal is maximizing your climbing efficiency, then surrendering is often not the logical solution, especially if you're in lower elo. In low elo, throws are very commonplace, so achieving the necessary break-even points is much easier. It's only when you get to very high elo that throws become much less common and it becomes much more advantageous to surrender. So if you're struggling in low elo or you're hovering right around a 50% win rate, my advice to you is to never give up, never surrender. Not only does playing the game out actually allow you to climb faster due to having a higher win rate, but it teaches you how to overcome adversity and how to come back when behind, which is an extremely useful skill to learn when climbing the ladder. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in the math I used to make this video, I've left a link in the video description below. If you've made it this far in the video and you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all my future videos. I hope you have a fantastic day. This is Randomonium, signing off.